Hello and welcome to a new video by me, Martin. This is ELT Experiences. And today I'm going to be sharing with you seven tips for teaching with Zoom in the classroom. So I have here Zoom on my laptop and I'm going to be sharing with you a couple of ways that you can incorporate Zoom with your classes. And hopefully this will give you some ideas on what you can incorporate when you're teaching. So the first idea that I'm going to share with you is adding a backdrop to your webcam. And the great thing about Zoom is you can add a dynamic background to you behind you and you don't need a green screen. So if I start um, a new meeting, for example, and here I have on my screen a new meeting running, we join audio with computer audio. And you can see my backdrop behind me. Now, it's not great, um, but you can see that it's, it's working. And if I'm, if I'm fixed with my MacBook, uh, students will see a nice dynamic background behind me. Now, we can change the background, and it's very simple to change. OK, so let's end this meeting here. All right, and let's have a look at preferences. And it's very similar on Windows, I believe. If we go to a virtual background, we have a variety of different backgrounds. And as you click through, you can see some nice images. OK, now this idea is when you're teaching students, you can add a background for the topic of the lesson that you're teaching. So, for example, if you're at a restaurant, go to a browser, go to Google Images, OK, and let's close that. Uh, so go to Google Images and search for a um, uh, image to represent the topic for you, that you're teaching. So if you're teaching about food, you could say restaurant, for example, and then find a nice picture of a restaurant. Download that. Uh, if you're going to teach about transport, you can have a look for an image on transport. And here we have a nice image, different types of transport. Save that. And then if we go over to our preferences again, we can see if we go to virtual background, click add, add image. And I downloaded it. So we could add these two. There we go. And then behind me, I've got the transport documentation. So you could prepare students by using quite a nice background behind you without the need of a green screen or anything like that. And then here's my restaurant and you're ready for the role play. So when you're using Zoom and you have a variety of students in the classroom at the same time as you, um, rather than just nominating one student and then another student and then another student, you can create a generator to generate or select a person at random. So let's start our new meeting again. And here we are. I'm in the restaurant, ready to go. OK, and uh, let's share the screen. So um, let's go to here. And on Safari, I've got uh, wheelofnames.com. And this is a really, really useful online tool. You can share this with the students and they can see what's happening. So if we click and then we get <gasps> Gabrielle. <laughs> now, the good thing about Wheel of Names is that you can either remove the name or you can keep the name. And for example, if you remove it, then you're left with the other names that are on there. Um, but I, I tend to just close it down rather than removing it. And then everybody has a, an even chance of being selected again. OK, so that's idea number two. OK, so idea number three is to use a, a sharing platform with Zoom with a Word document or Google Drive. And for this, I have a Word document that uh, one of my students sent me as part of their project. And let's have a look at it. Yeah. So what I tend to do is I go on to here 
I clicked Microsoft Word, the reading project, okay? And here you can start to see uh, the language. I tend to turn off the dictionary. So if we go here, do not check spelling or grammar. And this is what I tend to do with my students so that they're aware of um, that any errors or spelling will not be picked up and it's up, for, up to them to try and work out where the errors are. But for lower level learners, you can put that back on and any blue highlighted areas or red highlighted areas, they can start to have a look at that and then the suggestions as well. All right, so you can nominate students to work together. You can use the annotation tools, for example, and you can start to highlight areas or underline areas which need um, a bit of analyzing or reflection for students to do. So during my reading to new books, again, this phrase here, you can say, mm, just have a look at that, put any suggestions down in the chat, and then they can put all their suggestions down, okay? Uh, actually, I don't like to read, but I used to read a book about developing self. Okay, developing self. Okay, again, noun phrase. You need a noun phrase there. So all the students. Okay, um, and then uh, I try to read this book in English. I are you talking about now or are you talking in the past? Okay, so those those ideas and all these an annotation tools and, you know, spotlighting things and the students can all start to work together. Now, the second way of using this is actually going on to Google Chrome with Zoom and sharing some of the ideas and the thoughts together and putting in comments within Google Chrome. So this is another thing I tend to do. So let's switch over to Google Chrome. And uh, let's click on file upload. Let's find this document that I had and it was reading and it's uploaded. Okay, and uh, if we click on here, open with Google Docs, that takes a while, let's fit. Now, when it comes to sharing a particular document with students working together, you need to click share. You need to click advanced and then it's private it's just for you change privacy settings to on anyone with a link okay so anyone with the link will be able to access it no sign in required i click uh, here can edit and com can comment or can view yeah so the default setting for anyone with the link is that anyone can view the document but if you want students to edit it, you need to click can edit as well. Click save. And now you've got the link here. So I tend to go and click control C or command C if you're on Mac. I go to the chat and then I say access the document here to start review and there we go boom and you've got the link and the students can go straight in and they can access it no signing required and then you'll start to see a number of students go on and then they'll you know you can start to highlight things and you can share the screen so for example safari here we go and you can say okay i'm going to highlight this area here it's got a suggestion there, so maybe students can highlight it and then they can have a look at this sort of thing. Now, the good thing about Google's Google Drive and Zoom together is you can also annotate at the same time. So, for example, Spotlight, you can add the Spotlight here and the students can look at it. Um, the students can all work together and try and find errors and try and find better ways as well as the suggestions which are included with Google Chrome, and that's fantastic, yeah? So let's close that. Uh, the other thing that I like to do is maybe add in a comment, yeah? So you can comment, and you can say, hmm, you need to rewrite this sentence. part of the sentence. Then I click comment and then all the students can see that I've commented and they can start to reply. 
Um, if things are correct, you can click resolve and then remove the comment. It's that simple. And, you know, combined with Zoom, where students can see what they're doing and, you know, you can monitor what they're doing. You don't really need to have Zoom. But for me, I like to share students what they're doing. Um, then it's a brilliant, brilliant tool. OK, so this leads us on to idea number four. And idea number four is actually exploiting the whiteboard that you have at your disposal with Zoom. And the whiteboard is brilliant because you can click here, share to whiteboard, click on that. And now we have a full whiteboard. So, for example, I could say, hmm, OK, so with the whiteboard, it's a really useful tool. You just need to get used to it. You can have a sort of mind map, um, which is a great tool. Um, you can just select a circle like this. You can type in transport, and then you can get students to think of different types of transport. And I'm going to change my, um, bear with me, I'm going to change my screen, my virtual background, to transport. There we go. So students are ready. Let's share the screen again to whiteboard. And here we go. Boom. And we haven't lost it. The good thing is the whiteboard, you're able to keep things there. OK, so you could then get uh, students to start to um, add in different words. They can type in. You could share the annotations to students so they have access to it. And um, it's a really good brainstorming session. If they find it difficult to use the um, whiteboard, I would recommend getting students to type in different words that they are they think of when they hear the word transport, OK, and type it in the chat. And then when you monitor the chat, you can click, uh, let's see, uh, chat. And here we go. And so you can start to review the chat, and then you can start to add in the words that the students are responding to as well. All right, so I hope that helps. And the final thing with regards to the whiteboard is that um, it's a useful tool for students to play a game. So um, let's clear the whiteboard, clear all drawings, and say you've looked at transport, and say you've got a taxi, a ah, motorbike. OK, so you're, you're teaching students. Uh, you've covered all this language. And as a game, you could nominate a person. OK, so let's go off to our uh, document. Let's choose a person. And we're going to go with Dyer. Or Dia. OK, Dia. So Dia is our first. She chooses a name by herself. She doesn't tell any other students. She chooses a word from here, and she tries to describe the word. So for example, she may choose a word, and she has to explain it to all the other students, and the students have to put in the comment what word she's trying to explain. So she could say, oh, it's got two wheels. Uh, you ride it. It can go quite fast. And people have to wear a helmet when they ride it. And obviously, what you're thinking of is motorbike. Yeah. And everybody starts putting in motorbike, motorbike, motorbike. Yeah. And this is a really useful way of reviewing vocabulary and it can really help students um, with regards to uh, the language that they've looked at. OK, so that was idea number four. I hope it was useful. And we're going to move on to idea number five now. Now, idea number five is a very simple technique. Now, when you tend to close and finish off your meeting with Zoom, you're going to lose everything that you've added to the whiteboard or the chat. And what you need to do is there's a little button here called save. OK, um, you need to click save. And it will save to your local drive. All right. And the same for chat. Imagine there's a, a lot of chat. There's a lot of feedback that's been going on and there's a lot of communication. 
the students will want to keep that communication and the students can also save this as well and you click here save chat saving the whiteboard saving the chat will enable you to email everything back to your students at the end of the lesson so that they're able to access the language and the feedback and the error correction that was incorporated in with the zoom meeting the next thing about zoom is you can record okay you can you can record without audio or you can record with audio after you record it's dead simple yeah so let's stop recording there and then again that recording you can upload it to the cloud you can share it with the students so they can review it at the end of the lesson okay idea number six we're nearly there so idea number six is a very simple technique it's actually trying to get students to respond to what's happening live in the lesson with zoom by either using you know the reactions and you've got a thumbs up um, and it just shows on my screen here or you've got a you know a clap okay and uh, so you could say to students um, if you believe that the answer is motorbike give it a thumbs up and then you'll see which people give it a thumbs up if you don't think it's motorbike give it a clap and then you're starting to interact with the students with the function that you have with Zoom. And if you give two choices to students, is this correct? If you think it's correct, thumbs up. If you don't think it's correct, clap. Then you will start to gauge where learners are with regards to what they believe the answer is with Zoom. OK, and the final um, kind of tool that I would recommend is uh, incorporating Kahoot with the students to review language and vocabulary okay and it's very simple uh, all you have to do is you can go to kahoot.com okay uh, you need to sign in and you can create a Kahoot now it's very simple very easy you have a free version, you have a paid version. For me, I've got the free version because it's very simple. I just want to gauge to see how students have found it. So um, I have various uh, quizzes for students to uh, incorporate. And I'm going to not use the website to share with my students, but I'm going to use my iPad. And I'm going to show you how you can use your iPad with Zoom. And it's brilliant absolutely brilliant so we click share screen we've got ipad iphone via airplay let's click that and let's click share okay i go to my ipad okay so i go to my ipad um, and then i click screen mirroring on my ipad pro click zoom martin's mac pro and here it is on the screen so what I've got here is I've got Kahoot and you can see it on the screen here on my MacBook Pro um, and then I've got various quizzes. So imagine I've taught a lesson about um, uh, the UK and there's various questions about the UK. Um, I can say let's play and let's do a uh, host live and just takes a few moments. And whilst you're sharing this with the students, they can see. So you can say uh, player versus player, 1v1 devices. So they need their, their um, tablets or computer or smartphone to access this. And we can say friendly nickname generator and then click classic. And then they're ready to join. And so let's turn that off. Uh, all they have to do is they have to join the game, put in the pin number, and then you click start. And then obviously, because I don't have any people playing with me at the moment, I'm uh, unable to proceed with Kahoot. But it's a really useful activity to link up your iPad where you've got some storage devices on and some apps and various other things, and to share it on with uh, your MacBook Pro and Zoom.
Okay, um, so it's really, really useful. The other thing about Zoom and sharing Zoom with your iPad device is you can get Google Drive on your iPad device and link it in with your MacBook Pro. So um, let's just show you that. So here we are. <clears throat> let's go to Google Drive. And here's Google Slides, uh, this slide. So you could set up slides on your um, Apple device, on your tablet, and then you can start to show them. So let's uh, present. OK. And it should load up. There we go. So uh, you can use Google Drive. You can use various apps on your iPad and various games and other interactive um, content on your iPad synced up with your Apple device, your MacBook Pro, and synced up with Zoom so students have access to everything. OK, um, the final activity, the final thing that I would recommend for your online lessons and your tutoring with Zoom is to try and encourage students to re react and respond and to, um, you know, ask questions during the lesson. Try and ask questions, try and answer questions. So, you know, make sure that you're with your students and you say, OK, any questions that you have during the lesson, please put in the comments um, whilst we're undertaking the lesson and I'll respond to the comments at the end of the, the class after, you know, the, the final five minutes or so of the class. So I hope these ideas were really useful. Um, which one was your favourite idea with regards to Zoom and, uh, you know, different applications you could use? Um, what applications have you been using and have you been doing something different with Zoom yourself? It'd be really interesting to hear uh, from you. And as ever, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up hit that like button, hit subscribe. If you haven't subscribed already, it'd be great to see more people. I really appreciate everybody who tuned in last Wednesday um, or whenever it was, because this might be uploaded a bit later than the previous Wednesday. Um, but I really appreciate everybody who tuned in to my live stream on YouTube. And I really, you know, I, I thank you very much. And uh, I'll be planning another live session very soon. <clears throat> and please stay safe. Please stay at home. Please um, make sure that you're, you're safe, you're healthy, and uh, don't put yourself in any harm's way with regards to what's happening at the moment in the world. And yeah, um, enjoy your teaching. Enjoy your online teaching. Enjoy Zoom if you have it. And uh, yeah. I'll, I'll see you next time and happy teaching. Bye-bye.